Okay, so this is Final Cut 10.3.4. I'm actually using this uh, rather than uh, whatever the newest one is, 11.4 point whatever, uh, because I have some compatibility issues with AVC HD files. Uh, so I went back to an older version and it's working fine for me right now. Uh, but I'd like to show you how I deal with uh, simple multicam editing. <clears throat> now, this is a wedding. I'm a DJ, so I don't really take, uh, you know, super professional uh, video. I just do it for fun for my clients and for archiving. Um, and I shot this one with uh, a Canon um, G20, HFG20. And so you can see here, I turn the Canon on three different times. So I have three different files, one, two, and three. This is the dancing time. And then I have a GoPro, uh, which uh, you know separates the files into four, meg uh, four gigabyte files. So then you have to stitch them together, not stitch them together, but make a compound clip. So I took all of my GoPro footage that was turned on at this point, might have been two or three um, files, and I just grabbed them like this, one, two, three, right click and new compound clip and that's what I created and then it created it here. So now you have to have just one compound clip which it's easier to work with, uh, at least for me it is. Uh, okay, and then this is the second time that I turned on the GoPro number one and um, I created a compound clip of that and then I had a GoPro number two which was getting a different angle and I created a compound clip here and another one here, okay? So then once you have um, that all set basically i'm now ignoring all of these because these are all just individual clips and i'm not dealing with those i'm just dealing with the large clips so now i want to create a multi-cam editing because i want to be able to access um, all of these that are i have i have cameras going on at the same time basically okay all right so let me right click on the first canon one and i'm going to click new multi-cam clip now i don't really care what the title is i'm just going to click ok and then I'm gonna drop that into my timeline. Okay, now that I have that in my timeline, now I'm gonna right click on it. Now this is, uh, like I said, Final Cut 10.3.4, I think. Uh, you can right click and open an angle editor is right there, which is what I want in later versions, 11.4 or whatever the newest one is. You have to go to the top menu and you have to choose, um, you have to choose it somewhere in here, okay? But for this version, I'm just going to right click and say open an angle editor. Now you have it here. Um, you're wanna, gonna want to go to here and say add angle and add angle because I have two more angles. We'll call this one GoPro one. And we'll call this one GoPro two. Okay, so now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so uh, for the first one, I don't have actually any footage from any of the GoPros that I need to line up with the Canon because um, this is just ceremony stuff and I just shot that with one camera. So now I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so I can bring in the other Canon. So now I'm gonna go to Canon number two and bring that in. Okay, so now that I have Canon two in, it looks like yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to line up this first GoPro. So Canon two Let's find a spot. Let's see, do they get introduced? Yeah, introduce, yes. Okay. So now I'm gonna find a spot audio-wise where I can set a marker. Okay, so here I'm gonna start talking. So there's gonna be a marker I can, I'm gonna be able to make. Okay, so th thank you, Ver, something like that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna click on the file and click the M on my keyboard and it created a marker right here. Okay, so it's thank you, very muh, so it's like as I'm about to say much. Okay, so now I also have it, it looks like in this GoPro. So I'm just gonna drop that down here. Now you have to go to these monitors right here and you have to click on these, uh, this is the video monitor and this is the audio monitor. Cause right now, now I wanna uh, monitor the, GoPro. Okay, so it looks like introductions are happening. And I think they were just the only ones getting introduced. I'm not sure. Oh, no, it was a whole bridal party. Okay. Feel free to 
All right, about right there. Okay, so I'm gonna put in, uh, make sure that you're clicked on the actual clip because um, whatever click that you have highlighted is the one that it's going to put the marker on. Okay, bang, now I got the marker there. Now what you wanna do is you wanna get the marker, whoops, you have to have these um, so that it, it lines up with it automatically. You have to have this button clicked right here. That's your, um, I forget what that's called, but it locks, it locks things together. Okay, there we go. So now it locked that in, but it's not perfect, okay? Um, you can do it manually by expanding this and making your audio so you can see your audio, but you know, th these GoPros don't record the best audio in the world. So my audio waveforms aren't that awesome. Um, so it's just as easy to do it, let me get this off, um, by just going back to, okay, making your Canon, your original camera, the um, angle that this is gonna line up to, okay? So now I've got the Canon selected, and it's important that you do that because when you go to here, to the GoPro One, you wanna say sync selection, which is this, to monitoring angle. So it's monitoring, this is the monitoring angle right now. That's the one that is monitoring, okay? Um, and I'm gonna sync this selection to it. So go ahead and do that, and you're gonna see that it's not gonna take that long Sometimes it takes really, really short time. Sometimes it takes a couple minutes. It depends on how tidy I was at getting these two markers as close as possible. The, close, the closer that you can get these, the less that your computer is going to have to work. Now, this is actually long, a little bit longer than normally. Um, so we'll see how long this takes. Let's give it like 10 seconds or so. Okay, I think I know what was throwing it off. I actually, um, I have a whole bunch of footage here that I think is conflicting with the ceremony footage because I started this GoPro pretty early. Okay, so let's get that more like there, okay? Now let's try that again. We'll say here and sync selection to monitoring angle. I bet this takes a shorter amount of time. Okay, so it usually doesn't take this long, okay? So I obviously didn't do a very good job at uh, getting these markers down. So let's double check the markers one more time. Okay, so let's go back to here. Let me sort of expand this a little bit. I turned off this, uh, the whatever it's called, the scrubbing tool or the thing that locks, because sometimes it's easier to just be able to deal with things when that is not on. Um, so let's monitor the cannon. Oh, that's why I didn't, for some reason, I didn't do the marker very well. Yeah, that, this marker was off. So let's delete this marker. So this is good that I did it so you can see. Cut. Okay. It happens, you know. Okay, it's right there. Okay. I don't know if you if you have your if you have your mouse over here. No, it's still okay. So it still puts it there. So it's wherever you have your, if wherever you have the uh, thing right here. All right. So now we're going to go to the GoPro and double check that. So we have to monitor the GoPro. Yeah. So that one's pretty on. All right. So there we go. Now we're going to drag that, but we got to lock our lock our thing here. All right. Now we're going to do that. Now we can expand this. GoPro back to where it was. Okay, so that's making a lot more sense. Now we can go ahead and go back to monitoring the Canon and we're going to sync this selection and boom, it happened really fast. So that was my fault. But it's good that um, that happened so I could walk you through it. All right, the GoPro, let's see, the 2.1. Okay, so I also had the, the second GoPro going at the same time. So we'll kind of drop that somewhere in the same area and we're gonna have to monitor this GoPro now. Okay, and it's probably going to be at a similar place. Again, I'm going to take this off because it's harder to deal with. Okay, it's about right there. Put a marker down. Now we'll get back our locking mechanism and lock it right there. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the Canon and monitor that and go back to this GoPro and say sync selection, which I have it 
this is my selection, sync it to the monitoring angle, and there it goes. So that happened really fast, okay? All right, so now that I have those synced, very good. Now I just have one more cannon, and I'm gonna drop that over here. And let's see what we have going on here. Okay, and they're gonna be, so about right on the B, and they're gonna be, okay, put a marker there. Okay, and then let's grab, uh, this would be, let's see, this would be this one. Somebody moved my camera, but let's find it here. Now I got a monitor of the GoPro, and they're gonna be, so that's gonna be, let's see. Why were they dancing again? I don't know what was going on there. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I was lining these up correctly. Okay, and then we're going to go to GoPro 2, and we'll drop that in here. That's going to be around here somewhere. Right about there, it's pretty close. Okay, and we'll bring that right there. Perfect. Uh, I can't remember if I lined this first one up or not, so I don't think I did. Okay, and then let's line the second one up. You gotta remember to choose it as the selection. Okay, sync selection to monitoring angle, and there you go. All right, so now this is great. Now we have all of this lined up, okay? Now, one one thing before I show you the multicam, um, if you want to, I mean, you can do this later as well, but if you wanna do any, um, any effects, like for instance, I know that I'm gonna to wanna to color correct this first cannon. So I'm just gonna drag the color correction right there, and I'm gonna go back to it over here. It might be a little blown out. I might have shot it a little bit too exposed. Actually, it looks pretty decent. It gets a little, I didn't have the camera on auto at the time, so I probably should have since I couldn't really be next to it that much. I don't know, it looks okay. You know, this is really just for, for my own thing. All right, um, now what you wanna do is, I usually deal with two screens, so that's why I'm going a little bit smaller. If you want, I have two, two monitors, so you would click this this right here and then um, everything would be on your other monitor in terms of your uh, multicam editing. But if you're not going to do that, then I think you just go. Okay, so you just go here. So we can close that out. And you want to go back to your original, um, your original project. Okay, because we were we were in the angle editor. This is called the angle editor. You want to go back to your original, uh, just regular project. Okay, and one thing that you have to do actually that I, I might forget to mention is when we originally dropped the multicam into this uh, part of the program, it dropped that first clip in. Well, that first clip is still here. What you and we added then clips in the angle editor, which made the whole thing longer. Um, what you have to do is you have to go here and you have to grab it and make it actually physically longer. I wish that the program just automatically knew that and did it. Um, but it's not that hard to do, but you'll just have to remember to do it. Okay, so now this is, as you can see, almost four hours. It's over four hours. I have a bunch of junk here at the end that I can get rid of. There's nothing there. Okay, that must have been just one camera was left on or something. I can clean that up later. But if you want to do multicam editing now, 
Uh, it depends on how fast your computer is, but if you want, you can do it in proxy if you transcoded for proxy. So now it's got proxy files, and then you go to show angles. And up here, you can now choose how many angles you want to display. And obviously, I just have three angles. Um, so four angles is fine. I would like it if they would allow you to choose however many angles you wanted. Um, but this is fine. Two, four, nine, sixteen. You can usually, you're somewhere around there. Okay, um, here you can make your whichever picture you want bigger or smaller. Um, usually it's something like this. I usually do. Actually, I'm usually dealing with two monitors, so this doesn't matter. Now, you're only seeing one um, one angle because I only have one angle at this time of the day. As you get to here, now you see the other angles. And um, up here, you want to have these. Th this is important how you have this. So um, when you right-click on the file right here, <clears throat> you have your active video angle I have as my Canon and your active audio angle. I'm going to keep my audio always on the Canon, so that's good, okay? Um, I'm going to be changing the video angle as we go, though. So what you want to do is, if you have this one clicked, then every time that you go and you, you press this button to change angles, um, it's going to not only change the angle of video, but it's also going to change the audio to that camera as well. If you have this one clicked, it's going to do the same, but just with audio. It's going to be changing the audio every time you do it, but it's going to keep the video. If you have this one clicked, it's going to keep the audio, if I said that right, it's going to keep the audio on whatever you have here, which is the active audio angle, and it's just going to change the um, video angle. So I almost always deal with this because why would you ever want to you know, change around the audio you know, change different audio mics, and the GoPros record pretty terrible audio. Okay, so now uh, when you're going through and you want to change your angles, you can just go like this, click. This one's obviously messed up, and then click, and then click. And if you look closely, what it's doing is, down here, it is making your cuts for you, okay? okay. Alright, so that's how I set up a multicam editing for at least my wedding videos. Uh, in a future video, I'm going to show you how I do it for a concert, because I also record uh, jazz concerts, and I usually shoot that with four GoPros and two Canons, and it's actually a lot, um, a lot easier, because basically I'm just pressing record at the beginning of the concert and stop at the end, so there's not, it's not quite as complicated as uh, this one was, in terms of all of these different places, and you're turning the cameras on and off at different times, so... Um, hopefully this helps somebody and uh, it took me a long time to learn how to do this well and the little little quirks that you have to remember like clicking back on your monitoring if you want to you know monitor to that angle and make sure that these buttons are on and before you go ahead and make sure that you're you're actually you know have your selection done little stuff like that so hopefully this helps somebody and uh, we'll go on to the next one after this cool thanks